Today, I'm going to be explaining why you should never, ever go to bounce houses inside of the back rooms. And that's because level 257 shows us exactly what happens if you do. The level's called They're Still Alive Out There. And it's been on my radar to cover for a long time. It's got bounce houses. It's got cool effects. It's dangerous. And that's pretty much all I'd love in a level. So without further ado, let's get into the explanation and let's see what is up. Level 257 has been given a class variable safety rating because it's not stable. There are a couple entities that you're probably going to run into and the safety changes depending on where you go inside of it. The level is comprised inside of a huge indoor inflatable park. This park itself is split up into a bunch of different rooms and halls and corridors that you can explore. These huge Huge massive open areas are connected by small hallways and the areas can take the appearance of bounce houses, trampoline parks, slides, ball pits, foam pits, pretty much anything you could expect from a real life indoor bounce house theme park thing. The hallways that connect these giant rooms are superficial and they often lead to false exits and dead ends. A lot of times there's doors that lead to the hallways that have giant exit signs over them and they don't even work. It's all fake. Usually the halls are tiled or carpeted and they take the appearance of hallways from real life bounce houses and trampoline parks. The entirety of the level, just like a ton of other ones, has very strange geometry. And because of this, everything is constantly shifting and warping. Sort of like how a Rubik's Cube works, that's how the entire complex moves around here. The shifting and warping is actually pretty deadly, especially if you are stuck near where a shift is happening. So if you're in a hallway walking from room to room and a shift happens, you might glitch into the wall that's glitching and suffocate. Or if you're in like a ball pit when it's glitching, you might fall into that glitch and never be seen again. But don't worry about all that, let's get to the rest of the level. When you wake up inside of this level, you'll see that you're in a huge open room. This room could be any of the ones I listed. It could be a bounce house. It could be a trampoline park. It could be a foam pit. Whatever the case is, this is where you will wake up. And there's a few things that you should be aware of right off the bat. For one, the lights in this level that are above you emit a very mild gamma radiation signal. So you might notice that they seem oddly bright in some parts, and that's because of the radiation. If you stand underneath these lights for a long period of time, typically for like 20 minutes or so, the likelihood is you will get radiation sickness. Now you can try to find light switches and stuff to turn them off, but they won't work because they don't even run off of electric and the light switches seem to be fake. Yay. Some of the rooms are bright and some of them are dark. And it's in these dark areas where the geometry stuff that I just mentioned is more likely to happen. That's why the hallways are more common to glitch. This geometry effect on this level is known as non-commutative geometry. And it's pretty much the main problem that you'll face right off the bat. But essentially what this means is that you can't really walk or use anything and expect it to work the way it should. Like if you're up on a slide or something and you're about to go down inside of it, you could choose one slide thinking it will lead you one direction, but you'll go down and you'll end up coming out of another slide across the room. Or if you wanna jump into a certain ball pit or something, you run and jump inside, but once you hit the floor, you're actually jumping on a different trampoline in a different part. It's almost like a destination randomizer. So you can either have fun with it and just go down a bunch of random directions, or you can let it freak you out. It's up to you. When you're here though, you can actually use all of the equipment. You can bounce around on the inflatables, you can use the ball pits and the foam pits and the slides and the rock walls. Just beware of the geometry stuff I mentioned and that should be okay. But while being in this level and going from room to room through the halls, you do need to be aware of a few things besides the non-commutative geometry shifting. Those things are the lack of clean almond water, hallucinations, and a few entities that you might find, as well as the way new rooms form and I'll get into all those in a second. Most of them are pretty self-explanatory though. New rooms forming is a unique thing to this specific level. Because if you're here, if you walk around and you break anything, whether it's breaking a bounce house, breaking a computer at the front desk, cracking a tile on the floor. If you do that, a new room will form. So anytime you break the level at all, a new part of the level will form. Now, it's not a good idea to try to find where this new part of the level formed. Now, when the new formation happens, a door and a sign will appear on a random area inside the room you're in. Now, you need to be aware because it is not a good idea to immediately go into a new room once it's formed because they're extremely 
extremely unstable, and they're made mostly out of this glitchy void-like substance for about the first 24 hours. It's almost like the level has to have a 24-hour period to form. But after that next day, you can then open the door and walk in, and you'll be greeted with a completely new room, and a new door on the other side, and new decorations, and a new layout. So because of that, this level is infinite. It has no end, and as long as you keep breaking things, or even just cracking or scratching things, a new part of the level will form. It's very important to try to explore these new levels after that 24 hour period as well, because this is the only time where you might find fresh almond water, as well as other resources. There are also specific pill-like substances that are available on the counters and tables in these newly formed areas. I'll explain that later, but it can be really useful to explore these new parts right as soon as you can after that 24 hours, just to get the resources. And the reason is because this level disposes of of all organic life, even humans after a certain amount of time. Humans and entities can typically survive longer than other things like bacteria and viruses and food, but still, if you stay here for a really long time, you will begin to break down at a molecular level. The level is almost sterilely clean. It's very, very spotless, and that's because any biological thing just gets cleaned off by the level. And that goes for food and water here as well. If you bring food or water, even if it's almond water, and you leave it out without drinking it, it will turn into liquid pain or something bad, or it will just simply go away. As if the level just consumes everything that's good, which is just amazing. I love it. No, I don't. Not at all. But if you couple the almond water getting taken back from the level and cleaned away, as well as the gamma radiation from the light, as well as the geometry issues, this is what causes the hallucinations and people can easily just lose their minds here. Speaking of which, after a few days or weeks here, you might begin to notice these hallucinations form more and more. It might start with a floater in your eye or weird shadows in your peripheral visions, but if you stay here for longer than that, more things are not uncommon to see. Things like entities crawling around in the ball pits or creatures swarming around the balance houses. It's assumed that these are real and they wait for your sanity to break down to attack you, but they also could be a hallucination. It's really hard to tell in this level. But the geometry, the gamma rays, the lack of almond water, the hallucinations, all of these cause really high stress levels, and in some case, people have lost their eyesight due to the high level of stress. So it sounds like the level's out to get you. The level just emits feelings of emptiness and sorrow, and it's all mixed together with this nostalgic background. These places, these layouts, they remind most people of their childhood, their innocence. But instead of visiting these places for a few hours like you would as a kid, you're stuck here in this level forever, with nothing but the inflatables and the smell of plastic for infinity. And depending on how good you are when you're alone, mentally, this will determine if you survive the level. Because if you give into the madness and the insanity and being stranded and isolated, you probably will not make it too far through any of the rooms. Now, as I mentioned earlier in this section, there are a few entities that live here, and those are the Hydrolytus Plague, Bacterias, a few windows, and some other mysterious things that you might see after being dehydrated and losing your sanity for a while. Now, the Hydrolytus Plague is pretty rare on this level, and it only lives inside of water bottles that have been left out. Drinking that water with the plague inside can lead to congestion and migraines and delirium as well, and it pretty much just makes everything worse. Window entities are also here, and they tend to appear when the wanderer is losing their mind. They're at their breaking point. Like, right when a person is about to begin the wretched cycle and they're about to turn into a wretch, these windows appear, and they attract wanderers in this delirious state to themselves. Windows themselves often portray an exit or an exterior that you might be able to get to, and since wanderers think that's the way out, they'll run to the window and they'll be consumed by the window. Other than these things, those strange creatures that you might see after you lose your sanity more and more, like I said, it's unknown if they're real, but they have been described as tall humanoids with exaggerated features. That's all I have on them right now. Sorry. Now, earlier I mentioned when new rooms are formed inside this level, almond water and specific pills can be found on tables and desks after the room is formed. There are red pills, orange ones, yellow ones, green ones, blue ones, and indigo, and these have all been documented giving each and individual person different effects after they take them. The pills can either hurt or help your chances of survival here, and you might want to use them to escape. The red pill contains high amounts of electrolytes, 
so it can kind of give you a short-term energy boost for running or bouncing around anywhere, and it could be useful if you're trying to run away uh, to get to the exits. The orange pill is known to cause deficiency in vitamins, and this can cause your motor skills to stop working right, and it can cause you to be tired. The yellow pill causes energy boosts randomly to any person that takes them, and it can be good or bad depending on when the boosts happen. You can't control them. They can happen while you're sleeping. They can happen while you're awake. It just depends on where you're at. The green pill contains a high amount of vitamin C which heightens brain functions and makes you think really fast. This can be helpful as well while trying to regain your sanity. The blue pill is the worst because it just kind of gives you the same effect as liquid pain does. It causes joint problems, it causes sickness and migraines, it causes things like that. However, it can be used against entities though as an offensive weapon, like crushing it up and spraying the powder on them. So you can do that as well, but do not take them yourself. And finally, the rarest pill, it's the indigo pill. And it's only a theoretical because there's only one report of it existing. If you take it, it's said that your mind might break into a million hallucinations. So don't try one if you see it, I guess. These pills are very enigmatic and are not seen on any other level in the back rooms, only here. Let me know in the comments if you would try them. It's a very interesting concept, I think. The pills themselves are located at the front desks of these different rooms. If you've ever been inside of a bounce house or a trampoline park in real life, you notice the front desk. That's where they're at here. To enter this entire level, you can go through a trap door on level 276 that is labeled Nostalgia, and you'll wake up in a random room here and you'll experience what I just explained. To exit, you can locate an area of the level that seems to be voided or unrendered. So you can cause an unrendered level by scratching or breaking something in the level and it'll open up a new area. That is an unrendered place and you can use it to exit. Just make sure it's glowing white and once you do that you can no clip and you might get sent to level 280. This level is a pretty high risk, high reward type of situation. You know, the risks of getting trapped between glitching hallways or unrendered bounce house rooms and then losing your mind, that's a high risk, but it might be outweighed by the fact that you can find those very enigmatic pills here and maybe use them as currency or weapons in different levels. Also, you could just jump around on bounce houses forever. That's pretty fun to me. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, leave a like. I love levels like this and I hope you did too. Sorry about my voice. I, I don't know what's happening with it. Maybe I need to drink water, but it sounds kind of scratchy. I do hope you enjoyed though. Leave a like and let me know in the comments what other levels you want to see. Thanks so much for everything you do and I will see y'all in the next video on any of my channels.